Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronics Fix. Today I'm talking about the top five issues with the PlayStation 4. Now, if you don't know, I run TronicsFix.com. We're a independent repair facility located near Portland, Oregon, and we fix thousands and thousands of these PlayStation 4 game consoles of all makes and models from the very first one all the way up to the PS4 Pro. So I've seen most every problem that these consoles have had. So now let's talk about the top five problems with the PlayStation 4. Now, one thing to take note of before we get started is I have read a lot of articles online about the problems with the PS4 game consoles and unfortunately there's a lot of articles that just are not true or accurate so if you're getting your information from articles written online even from seemingly reputable sources just be careful with it just know that a lot of those types of articles are written by people who don't actually have experience with these game consoles so with that being said I'm gonna tell you from experience the top five problems so the number one problem that we have seen here at Tronix Fix with the PlayStation 4 game console is bad HDMI ports. Now please keep in mind that this was way more common with the first versions of the PlayStation 4. The PS4 Slim and Pro aren't nearly as prone to bad HDMI ports, but it still does happen. Now the reason this is number one on the list is because we've literally replaced thousands of these HDMI ports. So for any of you that don't know, the HDMI port is where you plug in the HDMI cable on the back of the PlayStation 4. And this is what the replacement port looks like. It's just a little piece that gets soldered onto the motherboard. One of the ways that you know that your HDMI port may be faulty is if you get the white light that comes on on your console, but it doesn't show anything on the display. It'll sometimes say no display on your TV or something like that. And usually when that happens, it's the HDMI port itself. Sometimes it can be the cable or the TV or something like that, but usually it is the port or sometimes there's even a small chip on the motherboard located right here and that is a small IC chip, and sometimes that chip can actually go bad. So if the port itself looks good, there's no bent pins, it's not bent up or anything, then it could also be this chip. Now also keep in mind, if, you have a, if you've had a lightning storm, sometimes what happens is power will actually go through the HDMI port into the back of the console and it'll actually take out this IC chip. So that's another thing that you need to keep in mind is it might not actually be the port, it could be the chip itself. Now, how do you know if it is indeed the port that's bad? Well, the first thing is you need to make sure that the white light comes on. So that tells you that your PS4 has been fully turned on, it's gone through all its self-tests and it's ready to display the signal to the TV. But if you have the white light and there is no display on the TV, then the next thing to check would be your HDMI cable. You may want to try a new cable or a cable that you know is working from another device in your home and try that new cable. And if that still doesn't work, if, if it comes to the white light, you've tried a new cable, wiggling the cable doesn't do anything, then it's likely you have an HDMI problem on your system. It could be the port, it could be the chip. So another thing you can do is just remove the cable and take a flashlight and look in the back of your PS4. See if there's any, anything bent, anything uh, that looks funny. And that's another way that would be easy to tell for sure if it's the port or not. The second most common problem with the PS4 game console is the PS4 turning on and then back off and or a blinking blue light on the console. Now, a lot of people get confused with the blinking blue light and it turning on and off, but they're actually tied to the same issue with the console. So the PlayStation 4 has what's known as an APU. It's called the Accelerated Processing Unit. It's the CPU and GPU put together into one chip. So you won't find two main chips on the board. You'll just find one. And it is normally located right here on the motherboard. I've taken this one off so you can see what's underneath. And you'll see there's a lot of little tiny solder balls on there that basically get heated up and will melt onto the circuits onto the motherboard right here. And this is what does all the processing. Now, these little solder balls and the, and the pads on this chip will sometimes go bad. Sometimes the pads will be oxidized or sometimes there'll be a crack in the solder joint or something like that. And when that happens, you get the blinking blue light and or it will 
turn on for just a split second and then turn right back off. Unfortunately, this is a problem with all of these game consoles, whether you're talking about the original or the Slim or the Pro, I've seen it in all models, unfortunately. So it is a big problem with the PS4s. And if it wasn't for the earlier versions of the PS4s that had a lot of bad HDMI ports, this would definitely be probably the number one problem with the PlayStation 4 game console. Now, unfortunately, with this sort of problem, the fix is actually can be quite difficult and some of them aren't even fixable at all. The first thing that sometimes will work if you have an older model is to put washers under the clamp that goes over the APU that will tighten down the clamp and sometimes restore the connections under the APU itself. Unfortunately, if that doesn't work, the only other thing that sometimes work is to remove this chip, put new solder balls on, and then solder it back onto the motherboard as you can imagine, that is quite time consuming, difficult, and expensive. And even when you do that, sometimes that doesn't even work. And even if it does, you never know how long it's gonna last. So unfortunately, a lot of times if you have the blue light of death or it turns on and back off, there's not a really good solution for that. I always recommend just trying the washer fix. If that fixes it, great. You wanna make sure and save all of your information online so if it happens again then you won't have to worry about that the problem is that you, you never know how long that fix is going to last so you want to make sure all your information is backed up now that's the worst case with all of that being said there are several other things that can cause it that actually aren't hard to check the first thing is just to make sure that your power cord is plugged into the back of the console very firmly sometimes it'll work its way loose over time and that can cause the on and off problem also you want to make sure that it's not plugged into a power strip for whatever reason sometimes when it's plugged into a power strip it can cause the on and off problem you'll want to take it out of the power strip and plug it directly into the wall and test it that way and see if that fixes it that as strange as it sounds sometimes that does fix the problem now if none of that works then unfortunately you're probably looking at what a lot of people call the blue light of death or the on and off problem that is very difficult to fix now the third most common problem with the PlayStation 4 that we find here at Tronics Fix is disk drive problems. One of the common things that happens is the rollers under this bottom plate will get dislodged and sometimes this white piece will fall out. A lot of times people will pull the disk out too fast and that will cause this white piece to become dislodged and a lot of times you'll find it just laying inside here somewhere and that will make it so these rollers can't pull the disc all the way in. And that's a really common problem with the earlier versions of the PS4. The later versions, such as the, the Slim and the Pro, it's not as common, but it does happen. Another thing while we're in here to mention is the rollers. These rollers can get very dirty, especially if you live in a dusty environment or you have pets where there's lots of hair around. These can get really dirty and I've seen them so dirty that they won't actually even pull the disc all the way in. So keep that in mind. If you're having problems getting your disc in, it could be these rollers that are very dirty. Now the second thing that happens a lot with the disc drives on these consoles is this laser itself. This is what reads the disc. And as I said, especially if you live in a dirty, dusty environment, if you smoke, if you have pets, a lot of times this lens right here will simply get dirty. Now, sometimes you can clean it, but we always recommend just replacing it since you're already into the game console. Now, the other thing too is that whether or not you live in a dirty environment, this part will go bad quite often. And we've seen a lot of those go bad with the PlayStation 4 game consoles. And usually an indicator of that is you put your disc in and it just says it's unreadable or you need to clean it or, you know, an error like that. Keep in mind too, while I'm talking about this, always make sure that your discs are clean when you put them in here. If they're dirty, that dirt can collect inside here and cause an unreadable disc error. And another fairly common problem with these disc drives is the error, co error code CE3588-2. That's a pretty common code if you have been into your console and you've tried to replace this disc drive yourself. This board always needs to stay with the motherboard that it came with. So if you replace your disk drive, you need to make sure and put this board, this whole green board onto the disk drive you're putting into your console or else you will get that 
error code. Also keep in mind that I have seen several instances of that error code coming up when this board has been swapped and I still don't know the issue with that. I think there are some times when the ribbon cables get damaged and you plug them back in and for some reason that triggers the code. So always keep in mind you have to be very careful when swapping this board to make sure that error doesn't come up. So disk drive issues on the PlayStation 4 would be the third most common repair that we face. Issue number four is overheating issues. Now there's a lot of confusion with overheating, especially on the PS4 Slim and the PS4 Pro. The thing that you always have to remember with these game consoles is there's a lot of computing power and there's a lot of heat that is generated by these large chips on the board. So a lot of people will feel their game console, it'll feel hot to them and they'll think, oh no, my game console is overheating. That's not actually true. These are made to get hot. They're gonna feel hot when you put your hands on them. So being hot is nothing to worry about. Now, if your game console is actually overheating, it's gonna show a red light, it's gonna beep three times loudly, and then it's gonna turn itself off and give you an error. So that's what's gonna happen if your PS4 is actually overheating. If it just feels hot to the touch or something like that, or your fans kick up higher, that's totally normal. So that in itself is nothing to worry about. Now, if it consistently gets worse and worse over time, then that might tell you that your PS4 needs to have some work done to it. So there's several risks Really common causes of over overheating with the PlayStation game console. One of them is the fan. If you have a bad fan, then what's gonna happen is you'll it will overheat. It'll tell you it's overheating, but you won't hear the fan kicking on really loudly. That tells you that you might have a fan issue. Now, it's not guaranteed. There could be other things causing that, but it's one indicator. Another thing that happens is this heat sink right here, the fan blows air through the heat sink. Now, if you live in a dirty, dusty, hairy environment or you're a smoker, a lot of times this actually gets caked with dust and dirt and hair and stuff like that. So that makes it so the fan can't push the air through here to cool it like it normally would and that can cause overheating. I'm gonna show you a clip really quick I took the other day of a PS4 that I was repairing that had so much debris on here that it couldn't push air through. So another cause of overheating is the thermal paste on the PS4, and I will show you where that is. This is where the thermal paste is located right here. If the thermal paste gets really dry and crusty, it's just not going to be able to transfer the heat how it should from the APU to the heatsink. Now keep in mind, it's very, very rare for the thermal paste just itself to cause overheating. Even with really old thermal paste, usually that in itself is not gonna cause overheating. But it is possible and it can and does happen. Usually what happens is there's a combination of problems like the heatsink is dirty and the thermal paste is dried out and so sometimes that combination can really cause a problem. And in that case, you'd wanna clean it really well and then install new thermal paste, of course. So overheating issues on the PlayStation 4 are the number four most common type of repair. And now everyone's favorite, the fifth most common type of repair is cockroaches. So the PlayStation 4 game console is the perfect little cockroach house. It's got vents right here, it's got vents in the back, so they can get inside the console. It's got a power supply inside that makes it stay nice and warm so they have a nice little warm area to stay even if it's cold outside. So it's really the perfect little bug house for cockroaches. Now one of the problems with that is number one, that there's bugs in the system. Number two, most of the time when there's cockroaches in it, they're gonna take out the power supply, which means your PS4 is no longer gonna turn on. And the third problem with that is that Sony won't fix it. Infested consoles is not something that's covered under Sony's warranty. So if you send it to them, they're just gonna send it to you right back and say that it's infested and not covered under their warranty. So if that's the case, you're gonna to need to find an independent repair shop that can fix that for you. There's not a lot out there, but there are a few, and Tronics Fix is one of them. 
Now, if you have this problem, obviously the best thing to do is try and get rid of all the cockroaches out of your house or apartment or where you live. If you live in an apartment complex, that's not always possible because you can't clean everyone else's apartment as well. So if that's the case, you're gonna need to find a way to keep them out of your console. Now there's several things I recommend. One is putting it up off the floor, kind of like as high as you can get it, so it's harder for them to get into it. Number two, and this is not something I've tried, we don't have cockroaches here in the area where I live, so it's not something I have to deal with, but if they were here, I would try putting like something like mosquito netting around it, or I've even heard of people just taking their entire PS4, putting it up in a, uh, some sort of sealed container until they wanna play it, then they'll get it out and plug it in and play it. So either any of those methods will probably work, but the main thing is you just wanna find a way to keep the cockroaches from getting in because if they do get in, they will damage the power supply. So there you have it, the top five issues with the PlayStation 4 game console. Based on my experience fixing thousands of these here at Tronix Fix, if you have others that you think should be on the list, let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know if you have any other questions or comments. Like this video if you like it. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for sharing it with your friends, and I hope you guys have a great day.